We can't live without water, so it's no surprise that there's so much water on Earth. If there wasn't, we couldn't be here. The only kind of place we can live is one that's wet. In the same way, the only kind of universe we can live in is one that's fine-tuned for life. So perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that the universe we see is right for us. The only kind of universe we could possibly live in is one that's fine-tuned for life. But is this enough to explain the fine-tuning? Well, it's of course true to say that the only kind of universe that we could um, be looking at would be one that's compatible with our existence. There is a sense, therefore, in which um, we shouldn't be surprised that we look out into the universe and we see a universe that allows us to exist. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be surprised that such a universe does exist and will think that there's nothing to explain here. Um, I think uh, the philosopher John Leslie gives a very useful analogy for this. He tells the story of a, a man who's uh, arraigned before a firing squad. Uh, and the, uh, the commander of the firing squad says, you know, present arms, fire, bullets fly through the air, um, hit the wall all around uh, the guy who's uh, been arraigned before this firing squad, but none of the bullets hit him. Well, he's quite surprised to have survived the firing squad and says to the commandant, uh, you know, what, what's going on? Is this a set up job? Has, you know, uh, is this sort of some sort of practical joke? Uh, and the commandant of the firing squad says, I don't know what you're so surprised at, after all. If uh, any of the bullets had hit you, you wouldn't be alive now to be surprised at the fact that all the bullets missed you. So, uh, case closed, nothing to explain. Um, but of course, there is something fishy about that situation, uh, as uh, even people like Richard Dawkins, he mentions this analogy in his book, uh, The God Delusion, and he says that yes, the guy should be surprised um, that he is still alive. Um, let me put it this way. Uh, just because uh, the man wouldn't be alive now were it not for the uh, previous occurrence of this unlikely set of circumstances doesn't mean that the occurrence of that unlikely set of circumstances was not unlikely or something that needs explaining. It, it, uh, it's certainly true that we couldn't be in um, a universe which was different in the kinds of ways I've been describing from this one but it doesn't answer the question as to why this particular one exists with these particular parameters and why we're here to observe it. Um, so I think it, it's still uh, related to, to, the, to the, the pack of cards or the, the firing squad. I wouldn't be here uh, unless the parameters had turned out right. Perhaps one day scientists will discover a theory of everything which explains why the universe has to be the way it is. A, a way of getting another sort of explanation, I think, that would be better than the one you've just offered, if I, <laughs> if I may be so bold, is to say, well, maybe things couldn't be any different. Maybe these cosmologists are wrong in saying that the constants of physics could take on other values, or um, the initial conditions could be different, or if they were different, things would turn out vastly differently. Um, maybe there's only one self-consistent set of laws of physics, um, in which case, well, if a universe is going to exist, then it's going to be this one, if you like, or one with these same laws. And so, in that sense, life is inevitable. For space scientist Graham Swinnert, the theory of everything isn't a convincing explanation of fine-tuning. When Stephen Hawking published his book 
A Brief History of Time. He said in that, I think, if I remember rightly, that, um, I'm sure he'll forgive me if I've got it wrong, but um, he said in that that, you know, in a few years' time we'd have a theory of everything. And I thought at the time it was a bit naive, really. But anyway, um, and uh, as time has turned out, as the decades have gone on since the publication of that book, it turns out that maybe we're not going to, we're not quite there. We haven't got a theory of everything. And another thing about the theory of everything, or the, the theory, the scientific theories that we have at the moment, is that when you, we understand a great deal about the universe, but it, what comes out, we have to kind of input the numbers in order to make the theories work. They're not, the current theories don't tell us why for example, this fine tuning takes place with nuclear reactions in the sun or why the initial conditions of the Big Bang are the way they are. So, okay, if it happens, it may be happen, I don't know, centuries away or something, or I don't really think it's going to happen in my lifetime. But it also goes against the grain of the, the whole um, argument, the way it's been in cosmology, really, of tweaking the numbers. And people are looking for, a, for, for a, a, a unique theory. But time and again, they've been driven away from that uh, to realise that actually they're not getting that much closer in the end. Uh, the, the more fundamental theories we get, we're still left with lots of, of, of free parameters um, that uh, seem to need to be chosen. Even if scientists do discover a theory of everything, this won't explain why the laws which have to exist happen to make the universe just right for us. That would still be a remarkable coincidence. So the theory of everything may just push the question up a level. But it would still also, I think, that answer leave you with a very, very big um, surprise that if the only possible set of laws of physics that could be instantiated um, were instantiated, that that set of laws would give rise to an interesting universe with stars and galaxies and life. A lot of people will try and provide an explanation to this Goldilocks enigma by saying um, it has to be like this or we wouldn't be here to see it. Now what's implied behind that is that in other universes where the constants were different, we wouldn't be there to see it. And it's a fair point. However, we need to be careful that at the moment, this idea of many universes uh, is uh, speculation. The fact that we're here isn't enough to explain why the universe is just right for us. Unless there really are many universes, and we just happen to have struck lucky. Next time, we'll explore the alternatives. God or the multiverse? <laughs>